Hey guys, so today we have another unique type of video looking at the top 10 most expensive Mopars that have been sold through auctions last year. This is my second most expensive Mopars video that I've done. I did one earlier on the most expensive Mopars sold ever from 1970 to around 2018. As for this video, it will just be for the Mopars sold during 2020. I will be going from cheapest to most expensive and there are a variety of different Mopars on the list, mostly vintage, ranging from 1969 to 2019. So it's a cool look in the past at some beautiful, beautiful cars. I've used data from the Mecham auctions. It's nearly impossible to track down every auction in every database in the whole country. So I've limited it to just that. So if I have missed something, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. Also, all the dollar values are in US dollars. So let's get started. We'll start off with the 1970 Plymouth Superbird, one of the winged warriors. This car also had a corporate cousin, the Dodge Daytona, which also makes several appearances on this list as well. The Superbird was a one-year only model for 1970, and this one was built in 1969. It's basically like a roadrunner on steroids. That had been the 1969 Motor Trend car of the year, so the Superbird was created from that, tailor-made to win NASCAR races. There were some requirements NASCAR placed on manufacturers, one of them being that the cars had to be available for sale to the general public. And according to the rules, at least 500 vehicles had to be manufactured and made available to the public before the model could be entered in any NASCAR event. So in the end, just 1,920 Superbirds were produced overall. This version sold for $203,500, and it's very desirable as it has had just four owners, 21,838 original miles, along with the original engine, transmission, and interior. The engine is a 440 cubic inch, 375 horsepower V8, paired with a 4-speed manual transmission and pistol grip shifter. The exterior's got alpine white paint, one of the six exterior colors that were available, along with a black vinyl top, Roadrunner Superbird graphics and decals on the wing, and hood pins and chrome exhaust tips to go along with the winged warrior modifications, like the stylized nose cone, fender-mounted air extractor scoops, and big wing, all from the factory. Rounding out the package are 14-inch rally wheels, with Goodyear Polyglass raised white letter tires. Inside there are the original black bucket seats and an AM radio. This car has fully been restored by Randy Delicio in Leons, New York, and it has its original broadcast sheet, owner's manual, numerous photos, extensive receipts, and paperwork as well. Next up is one of the most interesting vehicles on the list in my opinion, an absolutely stunning Hellcat that has gone through a carbon fiber 1969 Charger body conversion. Underneath the body lies a 2019 Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat. The non-widebody Hellcat MSRP was around $67,000, but this conversion sold for a whopping $203,500, so same price as the Plymouth Superbird. So for the conversion details, what makes this car worth three times the price from the factory? Well, a company by the name of 612 Auto Works out of Nanuit, New York, had the goal of building 10 of these conversion skins for the Challenger Hellcats with full carbon fiber bodies inspired by the 1969 Dodge Charger. They partner with Common Fibers, Speedcore, and Magnaflow to deliver. The bodies have a 4-inch wider track and 2-inch lower roofline, and it looks just totally fantastic. This vehicle on screen was the second vehicle built. I'm not sure if the other eight were eventually built later or not. Haven't heard too much on that. 612 Auto Works would strip the original bodywork from the brand new Challenger, SRT Hellcat, and apply their own custom Charger skin, fusing the 50-year-old car looks with present-day technology. The new body on this one was finished in plum candy purple glacier, exposing the carbon weave. Massive 21 by 12 Ford line wheels were added to complement the bigger body. Everything else remains stock here, including the 717 horsepower, 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi V8, ZF 8-speed automatic, and the interior. Even the blind spot monitoring system is preserved thanks to the clever 3D printed retro door mirrors. However, there should be some slight performance gains as the carbon body is 300 pounds lighter than the stock Hellcat. Moving on up, we've got a 1967 Plymouth Barracuda Hearst Hemi Underglass selling for a huge $225,000. Hearst Hemi Underglass was a series of exhibition drag racing cars promoted by Hearst Performance between 1965 to 1975. The original idea was that relocating the 426 Hemi to directly above the rear wheels would create more friction and thus more torque, so that would result in quicker launches, wheel stands, and faster track results overall. 
Each was based on the Plymouth Barracuda of each year, and the goal was for Hearst Corporation to showcase their products in the AFX class, A being the class of engines, and FX meaning factory experimental. So this vehicle here is the original 1967 Hearst Hemi underglass, of course used for the 67 season. It had the rear-mounted 426 Hemi V8 engine and a 4-speed manual transmission, but it also used fuel injection and alcohol. It had a Hearst shifter, of course, gold exterior with black stripes, black interior, racing belts, Krager wheels, and Goodyear racing tires. The Hearst Hemi would eventually disappear with its whereabouts unknown, but the original driver in the 1960s, Bob Riggle, was approached by a man claiming he knew where the original car was located. Bob would end up purchasing the car in Montreal and towing it all the way to Arizona. Eight years later, the restoration began for car collector Bill Sefton. The final product represents an authentic piece of drag racing history, and this has been through many public exhibitions and was on public display at the NHRA Motorsports Museum in Pomona, California. I've made a full video dedicated to the history of the Daytona nameplate from Dodge, so check that out if you're interested, but the Daytona was intended to be a high-performance limited edition version of the Dodge Charger. It was produced in the summer of 1969 for the sole purpose of winning high-profile NASCAR races, part of the win-on-Sunday, sell-on-Monday era of muscle cars. So here we've got another 1969 Dodge Daytona that sold for $231,000. It was originally sold at Western Dodge in Marion, Indiana. The 69 Daytona is iconic, only 503 of them were produced, and they're so flashy with the aerodynamic pieces, like the wing and graphics, nose cone, and air extractors. This one's finished in R6 red. Under the hood, you can find the matching numbers 440 Magnum V8 engine with 375 horsepower and four barrel carburetor and dual exhaust. The transmission is a three-speed automatic, and there's a sure grip differential with 3.55 gears. Inside, there's bucket seats, center console with shifters, music master AM radio, sports steering wheel, and remote driver's mirror. The outside also had styled road wheels, tinted windshield, flip-top gas cap, hood pins, and the Script Charger chrome trim. Oddly enough, there are two very similar 1970 Challenger RTs next up on the list, and this first one sold for $282,500, finished in the beautiful high-impact paint that would be FC7 Plum Crazy. This one has 40,000 original miles, and is one of 137 factory four-speed Hemi Challenger RTs produced for the 1970 year. This one is a pure muscle car with the V68 Sports Stripe Delete and no vinyl top. As with many of the cars on this list, it's got the 425 horsepower 426 Hemi with the A833 four-speed manual and original 4.1 Dana 60 rear axle and the Hemi suspension handling package. The interior's got an A62 Rally instrument cluster C55 bucket seats, and a Music Master radio. What makes this car so desirable is that it retains all the original body panels, the floors, and even the upholstery. So with the combination of factory options, originality, documentation, condition, and ownership history, this is one a Hemi Challenger RT that would be very hard to duplicate. Next up is another 69 Dodge Daytona. This one sold for $280,500 as the price keeps climbing. And this one was number 207 out of 503 produced. It's had a professional rotisserie restoration done and comes out of Vancouver, British Columbia in Canada. It's got just 42,000 miles on it with a matching number 440 Magnum V8 engine and the A727 3-speed torque flight automatic transmission. The A36 performance axle package added the 3.55 differential and power brakes with front discs and power steering. The outside is finished in the gorgeous R4 bright red with a black wing stripe and painted steel wheels. The interior's got the deluxe RT trim with bucket seats, wood grain accents, and an AM radio. This Daytona is meticulously documented with copies of the window sticker and broadcast sheet, the original VIN and fender tags still in place, and even the correct primary and secondary body ID stampings. Next on the list, we have a fantastic 1970 Dodge Hemi Challenger RT. This one sold for $302,500. This is the only documented Plum Crazy Hemi 4-speed Challenger RT with the shaker hood and super track pack that is known to have been built. Everything is documented via the original broadcast sheet. The most catching part of the car has to be the high-impact paint. Again, FC7 Plum Crazy, which was an extra option. 
It's also one of just five Hemi Shaker Challenger RTs with the four-speed manual and the hardtop. The Argent Silver Hood Scoop looks stunning, and the wheels are the FC7 matching as well. Other sweet options include N45 hood pins, chrome exhaust tips, rear bumper guards, driver's side mirror, black vinyl top, and car length black stripes. The interior's got black interior with wood grain trim and black bucket seats, 150 mile per hour speedometer, tachometer and clock, and more. Of course, the main draw is the 426 Hemi engine, Hurst pistol grip shifter for the 4 speed, and a Dana 60 Super Track Pack rear axle with the 4.1 final gear ratio. The Hemi features dual 4 barrel carburetors, but also has 1970 changes like the hydraulic cam and electronic ignition. This beast was featured in several magazines, and it won the OE Bronze Certified Honors at Mopars at the Strip in Las Vegas in 2009. Now we move on to the top three most expensive of the year. So this one we've got a 1971 Dodge Hemi Charger RT with a sunroof that sold for $319,000. This was actually the most highly optioned 1971 Hemi Charger RT that was known to exist with a base price of $3,223 and add-ons that took the final MSRP to $6,304.60. It's also just one of two Hemi Charger RTs with a factory M51 power sunroof option and one of only 63 built in the year with the big 426 Hemi engine. It's finished in Hemi orange with a white interior, and of course it's got that 425 horsepower 426, paired with a slapstick shifted torque flight 3-speed automatic, and heavy duty A34 super track pack rear end. It also has the RT package with side stripes, a blacked out hood and vertical door tape stripes, and also has the rally road wheels, front and rear spoilers, white vinyl roof, and color matching bumpers and mirrors. The car has been repainted once in the original factory color and has 35,638 original miles on the odometer. Inside there's power windows, six-way adjustable driver's seat, AM FM radio with 8-track and dictaphone, and even the rare optional rear shoulder belts. Former owners included Mopar collector Steve Siegel and NFL linebacker Kevin Green, and more recently it had been part of the Wellborn collection since 2005. The penultimate vehicle on this list is a spectacular 1969 Dodge Daytona from the Tony D'Agostino collection. This is an ultra rare vehicle as it's just one of two automatic 440 Daytonas that had the white paint along with a red wing and red interior. It sold for an incredible $346,500. Tony's parts is a big part of the Mopar community and he says he reached far and wide to find NOS parts or new old stock for the restoration. This is aged stock of merchandise that was never sold to a customer, but is still new in the original packaging. Mike Mancini's American Muscle Car Restorations did the job using all original parts, from belts to hoses to date-coated interior materials. Everything just had to be perfect. And they did a great job as the car won the OE Gold at the Mopar Nationals with a score of 2,228.5 out of 2,250, and they took many other awards like the Concours Gold, Best Dodge, and others at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. D'Agostino admits that he would be unable to ever duplicate this effort again because the authentic parts used in this restoration are just not available at any price any longer. Those NOS parts have simply been used up. The car has many other accolades being featured in countless books and magazines over the years. As for some more car specs, it's got the matching numbers 440 Magnum rated for 375 horsepower along with the 3-speed automatic torque flight. The big red wing is striking, and the 5-spoke road wheels and 14-inch redline tires complement the look. Inside there's that red vinyl interior, center console with integrated shifter, wood grain steering wheel, power steering, dash layout with 150mph speedometer, and tick-tock tack, along with the thumb wheel radio. Finally, we're at the top of the list today, and it's a very special Mopar, an unrestored 1971 Plymouth Hemi GTX with a sunroof and 49,416 miles. The selling price was a stunning $374,000, and it looks beautiful with the original Bahama yellow paint job. This car does have quite a story behind it. It was the most expensive Hemi car ever produced when it came off the assembly line, and also the most highly optioned GTX ever produced as well. Crazy to think it was just $6,592.75 back in 1971, which is around $43,475 in 2021 US dollars. The GTX had a base price of $3,707, then 
but when optioned out with a 426 Hemi, 4 speed transmission, Dana 4.1 Super Track Pack driveline, amazing power sunroof, AM FM cassette player with a microphone, a houndstooth interior, and power windows, the price tag jumped up by an extra $2,885.75, almost doubling the cost of the car. So that's like walking into the dealership to buy a newer scat pack for 40k and adding options so it reaches 80k. The story behind this car is pretty cool. A highly decorated sergeant by the name of Larry Dixon had just returned from Vietnam after winning the Silver Star, Purple Heart, and other military honors. He had his local dealership search for an unsold Hemi vehicle, and 3,000 miles away in Bay Shore, Long Island, there was this Hemi GTX, unsold for over a year on the dealer lot due to the high price tag. Larry would add some modifications like a Mallory distributor with a rev limiter, day 2 Krager wheels, and headers, and Larry would drive it until 1982, with the car disappearing until collector Scott Lindsay bought it from Larry's estate. The car was then passed on to Tim Welburn, becoming part of the Welburn Collection Museum in 2005. As for some other details, this GTX has the air grabber hood with tie-down pins, a dual exhaust with chrome tips, front and rear spoilers, sport mirrors, and power steering and brakes. Inside there was a rear window defogger, tinted glass, bucket seats with a console, heater, rim blow steering wheel, driver aid group with a seatbelt, low fuel light, a light package, an inside HUD release, and that factory sunroof, just one of two Hemi GTXs that were built like that. And overall, there were less than 10 Hemi Mopars of all models that were built with a sunroof in 1971. So this is really a one-of-a-kind vehicle with the numbers matching 426 Hemi and the original dealer selling paperwork. So that's the end of this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think of all these really expensive, cool, vintage Mopars. Which one was your favorite? Let me know down in the comments section below. And if you want to see more expensive videos like this one, let me know as well and give me some more ideas for those. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like, subscribe for all your Mopar content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.